Well, Matt, been a, a big week without a game to get over the uh, the defeat at Colchester last Saturday. Um, firstly, refle reflections on that game five five days on. Um, would you agree it was probably a, as poor a defensive performance as we've had in in a while? Yes, and it's, it's, when you watch the game back in for the first half of the half, if you like, first half is how good we were and and how comfortable we looked and, and really good on the ball and switching it and. The different aspects of our game that we can do was certainly in uh, in show there. Scored a really good goal, um, and then their first real chance corner, which we, we pride ourselves on, and normally so strong in defending. Uh, don't get the first contact, don't get the second, and, and we find ourselves one all. And yeah, and then like I said in the post match interview, just a a couple of um, uncharacteristic errors uh, and defensive lapses have suddenly. Uh, allowed cultures to go in three one at the break, which was a uh, a bit of a shell shock, and and you certainly wouldn't have, have backed that halfway through the half, and never no one would have seen that coming. So yeah, very disappointing goals to concede um, when we've been so strong defensively for for a very long part, uh, period. Um, so it was certainly a tough one to take Saturday for sure. And I think it showed you can't rely too much on the league table because they were they were in form and looked looked obviously boosted by the end of that first half looked looked a confident side. They've got good players and a, and a big squad and very good um, players all over the pitch. Experience, Akindi, you, you know, they've got young, real potential in Tovid and Chamadu. Um, yeah, they, they've got a big squad and they should nowhere near be where they are in the division um, with the squad that they've got. So, uh, But as we know, no matter whether you're playing a top team or, or a bottom team, the, the, the gap is minimal uh, and you have to earn and be right at it in every game or you do get beat. Um, so, uh, yeah, it doesn't, you don't look at Cole Star, well, they're one of the struggling teams. No, they're, they're a, a very good squad. Uh, we'll be very disappointed where they are in the league table uh, and we'll certainly be looking to have a go um, at the top end of the table next season. Um, yeah, and then you say about not worrying about top, mattering about top or bottom. Um, looking out to tomorrow's game, away to Rochdale, who are, who are bottom and, and going out of the league at the end of the season. Um, it's going to be a strange one, I guess, up there tomorrow. The atmosphere and, and everything. Yeah, and, and we've said before recently, these are sort of games the first I've managed in these types, and uh, you know they're relegated. They're, they're down. It's their last home league game in the football league uh, for a period of time. Um, so uh, yeah, I don't know what sort of crowd to expect, and, and the, they're always a, a little bit strange games. There's, they're not normal, are they? Um, so, but we, we go in there. We, we don't can't concentrate on that too much. We've got to concentrate on ourselves and and getting back to winning ways because I don't feel we deserve to be on the run that we've been on. Uh, we've played arguably the best teams uh, in the, what we have, <laughs> made the best teams in the division for four games and a disappointing result at Colchester. Uh, Culture and suddenly find ourselves on a, on a little bit of a poor run, which is not justified for all the hard work and the effort that we've done this season. And how well we've done this season. So we're certainly um, just concentrating ourselves and looking to get back to winning ways. And, and hopefully that's tomorrow. Just looking at the, in the league in midweek, the league table, a um, couple of results dropped us onto 13th, sort of in the in the lower half, just at the top of the lower half of the table. I guess, that, although, you know, in terms of playoffs, there's nothing to play for, but big incentive to actually want to finish in the top half of the table. So has that in a way concentrated the mind after um after the, after the midweek games, that suddenly we find ourselves in the second, in the in the lower half of the table, yeah. wanting to get back and make sure we finish in the top half. Well, yeah, you want to not just the top half. So it's, we're not just settling for twelfth. If we can finish tenth, then great. If we could try and get ninth, you know, that's that's what we're looking to try and do uh, is finish and win games and finish as high up as um, as we possibly can. And that's just natural from me, the staff, the players, and and the mentality that uh, is so strong at this club uh, to go and do that. Um, and unfortunately, we just find ourselves on the back of a, a few tough results and a few games that have, have disappointingly gone the wrong way for us. Um, but yeah, certainly uh, uh, looking forward and looking to watch down in our last home game and, and trying to get six points as, as, as best as we possibly can. Of course we are. And looking at the, the team news for tomorrow, um, we saw Ben Goodliffe limp off or come off at half-time in, uh, in the game at Colchester. I gather not connected with the, the injury he suffered in the... In the previous game, how's it he and, and others looking for tomorrow? Yeah, we've still got a bit of illness in the camp. It seems to be working around. That's, that's another thing I think's really affected us in recent weeks. So we've got a couple of new players who have, have not been ill, and it seems to be working around that are, that are definitely not available for tomorrow. 
Um, and then we've, um, yeah, with, with Ben Goodliff, a different injury. Um, got just before half time there, couldn't put pressure on it in the change room at half time. Hasn't trained all week, um, but it's Friday morning. I'm just about to, to see how we are for training and, and what we're uh, about to do now. So uh, he's a concern. Uh, there's another injury uh, doubt as well. So we're, we're literally just trying to, of course, pick the, uh, the fittest and the best team to to go out and, and uh, try and get that result for us tomorrow. But uh, there's still certainly a couple definitely out and there's still a, a couple of uncertainties where I'm sitting right now. There's a, the answer to the last couple of questions has possibly preempted this one, but you know, in, at, towards the end of the season, a situation where we are mid-table, not going to go up, not going to go down. It's not a situation you've been in with us sort of having games that, that from that point of view, don't have a, a lot riding on them other than wanting to finish as high as possible. Um, are you the sort of manager who towards the end of the season in that situation, might look at if you're thinking of something new or someone new, try, trying it out in the two games, or do you, you want to wait until pre-season to, to, to see that see that work? Well, I think you, as a manager, and I've certainly done this um, with Jason and, and everything from, from the minute I've walked in, you, you're constantly looking to improve, both me as just as myself and as a manager, um, and then with Jason, the extended staff, and, that, and that's not just... Um, with learning and adapting what you're trying to do, but that's improving and, and adding to your staff, um, as well as to your players. And, and that's constantly what we've done. We've constantly moved forward on and off the pitch um, for the four years that I've been here. So to suddenly just I'll off a whim, try, trying to experiment, I would, would do it here, but just because there's nothing to play for, what there is, I want to win tomorrow. So yes, I've uh, developed things, changed things and moved things on. But that's irrelevant whether we we still still think we can get into the playoffs, still get uh, get promoted, or trying to beat Rochdale tomorrow with two games to go. The mentality certainly doesn't change, um, and we're constantly looking to try and tweak and, and make us better with and without the ball, on and off the pitch. Um, so tomorrow, um, pre-season, moving forward, once we're into the season, uh, that that mindset and that mentality certainly doesn't change. And I think as well, we ought to take into account the last couple of months. No Louis John, um, no Craig Eastman since the beginning of April. Two huge players to have, to have lost. What is the what is the situation with them? Both out for the season, and, and hopefully uh, they have a, a good summer of rehabilitation and, and fitness work into them. And when we come back at the end of June for pre-season, that they're they're fit and firing and a valuable member of our squad moving forward. Um, and they're two big characters, both on and off the pitch, and they've been a, a big loss for us during this period. And I guess. I'm, I guess another one, Hisham Kasimu, who hasn't who we signed, who hasn't actually played. And it, in a way, is is that looking jumping ahead a little bit? Is that next season going to be like having a new signing? Hopefully, yeah. Yeah, and he's jumping a bit. I feel sorry for him because he uh, we knew when he signed for us that he had a little uh, ongoing problem, which we we knew was going to be available straight away, and we were confident we'd get it right, and we have. And then he got another uh, separate, different injury in training when he was literally on the verge of coming back and being available and. Um, which led into to him pulling out the warm up against Mansfield. So um, yeah, it's been a frustrating time for him, but uh, he's another one in that boat where uh, a good off season program, um, both in the gym uh, and the physio room, and, and then hopefully he's fit and firing, ready to go and, and make a huge impact for us when we start we start back uh, for pre season. And tomorrow it's been been a long away season, plenty of plenty of long trips tomorrow. Another long one. Supporters will be up there again to sort of enjoy the last enjoy the last away game of the season. Um, looking to give them a good good send off for the for the away trips. Of course, a send off for the away trips and a send off for our last home game last season. I'm, I'm sure you know huge amount of positivity, even though we want a, a little bit of a bad run. I certainly don't get carried away. I wasn't getting I wasn't getting carried away and getting too high when when we were absolutely flying and three defeats in twenty one. I'm certainly not getting carried away now. I know the rights and the wrongs and, and what we need to do, um, both positive and, and negative. And uh, the supporters will, will surely, and, and I know they will, recognise that. Uh, and for us to be sitting where we are uh, after a really difficult first half of the season, uh, everyone uh, connected to the club would have would have taken that um, sort of mid-November time. So I'm sure they'll travel up in their numbers. The away support has grown this year and it's been in full of great voice all season. We really thank you, uh, thank them um, for all their support on the road. And I'm sure they'll come and support us again tomorrow and um, be in great voice, uh, which then leads us into our last home game, which is exactly the same. Our attendances are improving all the time. Um, and we hope for a, a big crowd. And, and I know Carlisle will bring in a few down. Um, and, you know, they may still well be playing for, for something there. 
Um, so we, you know, we just want to say in these last two games, the away support and home support, just thank them for for their support because uh, we've really done it together in some some tough times, and but certainly had some good days as well. Right. Well, we wish you and and supporters all a safe trip up to to Rochdale this weekend, and um, we'll see you after the game tomorrow. Brilliant. Thanks a lot. Cheers.